Hey everybody, Mike here. As the Starlink constellation grows, there has been much more attention paid to the possibility of collisions in space. The latest involved the Chinese Tiangong space station. China had to maneuver their station twice to avoid a potential collision with Starlink satellites. A collision in space sounds kind of dramatic, so I wanted to visualize what actually happened. So I got out some Python and downloaded some TLEs, or two-line elements, from spacetrack.org. TLEs are observations at a given point in time of where a satellite is and which way it's going. So the first near miss was Starlink 1095. This satellite is part of the third Starlink launch, which makes it pretty early in the constellation. It was launched back in January 6th, 2020 from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The launch went nominally, as they like to say, and all 60 satellites were deployed uh, without really any issue. So this chart is showing kind of March to November last year. So the Tiangong Space Station core launched back in April 29, 2021. And you can see it appear on our chart here. And these animations give you roughly an idea of what this thing looks like. It's, it's big, not as big as the International Space Station, but it's definitely a, a big spacecraft up there. So you can see it pretty rapidly moves up to roughly its intended station keeping orbit, a little bit of fluctuation over May and early June, but you can see it's kind of settling it out at roughly 380 kilometers in altitude. The Starlink satellite, you can see it's pretty flat and then it starts to move. It descends continuously down until it too kind of stops right at around the same 380 kilometers uh, altitude. As soon as it hits that July 1st date, it then starts descending again. The second year miss was Starlink 2305. This is a much newer satellite, launched back in March 2021, also from Slick 40 in Cape Canaveral. And what I did is I just added it on top of our existing plot, so you can now see the second satellite. So I've added the green line here showing the altitude of the second Starlink satellite, the 2305, along with the vertical red line showing the date when the, the near miss occurred on October 21st. It's interesting that it's actually the second satellite, the one that they definitely have full control over, that came the closest to a collision with the Tiangong space station. Now, my plots are only looking at the altitude of these spacecraft. To understand the actual collision risk, you have to consider where in their orbit each one is. Thankfully, satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics did exactly that analysis and confirmed the two close approaches and the avoidance burns using data published by the US Space Tracking. The October pass appears to have been within three kilometers, which in space terms is really close. And this is based on US tracking data, not China's. So the big question is, why did SpaceX maneuver these satellites so close? And there's a few really interesting possibilities. I wanna take a minute to thank DataCamp, who is sponsoring this video. Using and understanding data has really become an essential skill. I just showed you that example, visualizing the satellite altitudes. I created these visualizations using the Python programming language. And that's one of the reasons I like DataCamp so much. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes acquiring data skills easier and more convenient. DataCamp has over 350 data science courses designed by top experts, including a full skills track on Python with courses covering the basics for someone who hasn't done any programming, right up to advanced topics, including a course on the same visualization library I used in my satellite example. Anyone who's seen my videos knows that Starlink is amazing. The aspect I love the most is it opens the possibility to do remote work anywhere. Programming and data science jobs are some of the easiest to find that allow fully remote work. You just need the skills. With DataCamp, you can develop those skills yourself. 
whether you're starting as a beginner or a pro, to stand out professionally and, and get access to those remote careers. So then you can connect remotely over Starlink, from a cabin, on a mountain, or anywhere else in the world. It's easy to get started. Use my link in the description below and you can check out the first chapter of any data camp course for free. So I started this video on purpose with the data. I wanted to analyze the facts of what happened and really get a visual of, of what happened without the, the speculation around it. Because in this part of the video, I'm going to talk about the conspiracy theories, the reasons why some people have suggested this might have occurred. So the first theory comes from the Global Times, which is a Chinese media outlet, uh, not with the best reputation at impartial, uh, neutral reporting. Their claim is that SpaceX and Starlink has a close relationship with the US military. Now we know that they actually do work together a lot on using Starlink in order to provide communication services to the US military, just like we as kind of commercial or uh, residential users use Starlink to get internet access. So that is a very public collaboration. We know the US military wants to use Starlink. But what's suggested in this paper is that through that tight relationship, the US government is you know, pulling the strings to get SpaceX to maneuver their Starlink satellites to intentionally test the capabilities of the Chinese space station and the Chinese sensor network. So the idea is the US government asked SpaceX to intentionally maneuver one of their satellites into a close proximity of the Tiangong space station just to see whether the Chinese government could detect the risk and respond to it. Now this one's interesting because it actually made me remember the plot of an episode of Star Trek. Uh, let's put that up here. We will pass as close as we possibly can. If they do have the ability to track us, they will move to avoid a collision. So maybe the writers for the Global Times are a fan of Star Trek as much as I am. Uh, I don't know, but I thought it was funny that this is almost exactly the same situation, just with a space station in, or a satellite instead of a cloaked Romulan ship. Um, it's also a bit of a strange accusation because the US government actually publicly makes available all of their tracking information, which includes the Chinese space station and all of the Starlink constellation. So it's not really revealing any specific capability that the Chinese might have because they could detect the risk of collision just by analyzing the data that the US government makes publicly available. It's the same place I got those TLEs to build the visualizations that I saw here. So for this theory in particular, I think it is a bit silly uh, for this particular situation. Now that's not to say something like this could never be useful to the US. The interesting thing about Starlink is there's just so many satellites that for something to go wrong with one of the satellites and it to maneuver or do something it wouldn't normally do, there's a bit of deniability there. It's a bit easier for a company like SpaceX to say, oh, it was an accident, something went wrong with this satellite and that's why it did this thing. It's a lot easier for SpaceX to say that than it would be for the US government with, with some other military or, or government asset, right? And plus there's so many satellites that SpaceX wouldn't be a big impact to the Starlink constellation if one satellite happened to drop out of its position and crash into something. It's not really going to disrupt the overall operation of the constellation. So that opens some interesting 
possibilities if you kind of look into the future of these Starlink satellites, the huge constellation is up here at 550 kilometers. Anything below, anything in a lower orbit is kind of vulnerable to these satellites kind of coming down at them. Now, this isn't like a kinetic impactor weapon. You can't drop a, you know, a tungsten sphere from a Starlink satellite and hit Earth. All of the Starlink satellites are designed to completely burn up in orbit. Unless you specifically built something to do this, you can't just multi-use these satellites to also attack a ground target. But anything in a low Earth orbit, you know, below 550 kilometers, it would be relatively feasible for one of those Starlink satellites to drop out of orbit and accidentally impact something and have a level of deniability there. So interesting theory, I think way far-fetched for this Chinese space station incident, but interesting thought experiment nonetheless. Now I love a good conspiracy theory as much as anyone, and certainly the Chinese state media don't have the best reputation at impartial reporting, certainly uh, when it comes to relations with the US. But at the same time, it's a good opportunity for us to dive in deep at the data and take a look at actually processing and visualizing what the data tells us. And for me personally, I think there are some questions there. Why did these satellites maneuver so close to the Chinese space station? I'm interested to see if we do get any official response, and I'll definitely cover it if we do. But I do want to thank DataCamp for sponsoring this video. Uh, definitely, again, use the link in the description. Get a free trial of the first class in every one of their courses. And really, I want to thank all of you for watching. I will see you next time.